Okay, so we are going to start lesson 9.1, chapter 9, lesson 1 on area of parallelograms. So you should be on page 661, and we're going to go over a little bit of vocabulary first. So first off, it says a polygon is a closed figure formed by three or more straight lines. A polygon is another word for a, sh you could just say shape, but it cannot be rounded shapes. It could be a triangle, it could be a square, or any quadrilateral. It could be any random shape you make as long as it has shapes and it's closed. It cannot be open, so that is not one, and it cannot be rounded, so that is not a polygon. So it's basically a shape with sides. Now, a parallelogram is a specific type. It's a quadrilateral. Remember, quad means four, with opposite sides parallel and opposite sides of the same length. And a rhombus is a type of parallelogram with four equal sides. So this says fill in the line in the diagram with polygon, parallelogram, and rhombus and draw an example of each. So I'm going to show you, this one you can kind of do with me, um, why it's in this circle form here. So basically, the bigger the circle is, the less specific the word is. The smaller the circle, the more specific it is. So if I want to start with the broadest word, it would be polygon. So a polygon, remember, it's pretty much any shape as long as it's closed and doesn't have round sides. Polygon is the biggest because inside the polygon fits the most examples. Now I'm going to draw a couple examples of the polygon. For example, a triangle, a rectangle. Um, you could draw a pentagon as long as it's closed. So you can just draw pretty much any shape goes in there. Now if we want to get to a more specific type of polygon, we would then go to parallelogram. So remember, a parallelogram is a polygon, but it has to have four sides, and those four sides, the opposite sides must be parallel. So for example, if I were to draw left and right being parallel, and top and bottom being parallel, that is a parallelogram. But you know what else is weird? If I draw a rectangle, the left and right are parallel, and the top and bottom are parallel. So rectangles are also parallelograms. So are squares. I mean, four sides, as long as the opposite sides are parallel, it's a parallelogram. And the last, we get to rhombus, which is a specific type of parallelogram. So rhombus goes in the, oops, rhombus goes in the little circle. Remember, to be a rhombus, remember, rhombus is a parallelogram with all equal sides. So I think of a rhombus like a square that tilted over a little bit. So I'm going to try to make the four sides look equal. It's kind of hard to draw. So it kind of looks like a tilted square. Now, by the way, a square is a parallelogram with four equal sides. So a square is also a rhombus. So you can draw that in there as well. So if you need time to get this filled in, um, just pause the video and fill it in. But I'm going to go on to the next page because we're talking about area of parallelograms. And here is the good news. We have been doing these with PSSA powers all along. Um, so to start you off, I want to zoom in and talk about some vocabulary. Um, we're looking at a lovely parallelogram right here. And the base of the parallelogram can be any one of its sides. It does not have to be the bottom. The height of the is the perpendicular distance from the base to the opposite side. Here's what that means. Wherever the base is, the height must be perpendicular. That means it forms a right angle. You see that little box there to say right angle? It forms a right angle, and it makes it all the way to the opposite side. So that's the height. You'll often see the height drawn as a pink dotted line, just to show you that. Now, to go down here, just like we've been doing on PSSAs, you are going to have to do the three steps, and they actually have them right here perfectly. So when you are finding the area of any parallelogram, you always write the formula, substitute the numbers in, and solve. Now I'm going to do this one here to find the area of this because they did not list any numbers. So if you're going over this one, the first thing you do is you write the formula for area of a parallelogram. Area is base times height. Now you may be wondering where is the base and where is the height. Well, guess what? You have to count them. So in this one, the base is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the base is 6, and the height you have to count up that pink dotted line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the height is going to be 8. So now you're going to substitute. Area is 6 times 8, and area would be 48. Now from now on, you have to write the unit. Now since this is a generic one, it's not inches or centimeters, we call them square units. So area, you would say, is 48. Let me make this a little smaller. It's 48 square 
units. Now, if you don't like writing that because it's too long, you could also write 48, you write the word units with a little exponent 2, that means squared. So this is the way I'm going to write it from this point on. All right, so remember, write the formula, substitute, solve every single problem. Next page, example two. I'll go through this one a little quicker so we can get to the practice problems. Okay, so take a look. We have a lovely parallelogram. You write the formula, area is base times height. Now be careful, you want to get the base and the height here. The base is 20 and the height is 11. It has to go straight up from the base. This 13 is just there to throw you off, so don't use that. So they substitute the numbers in. Let me get my pointer on. 20 times 11, area is 20 times 11. Solve it, area is 220. Now this one does have units, it's centimeters. So look at how they write it here. The area is 220 square centimeters. Or this is how you're going to be writing it because it's quicker. Area is 220 and you write, even though it looks like centimeters squared, we still say square centimeters. Okay, here is your job. Your job is to do problem A and B. Now they don't give you a whole lot of room, so you may have to go over here and show your work in your workspace. But here's what you must do. You must, for both, write the formula, substitute, and solve, and you must have your unit, like we did with square centimeters. So pretty much your work is gonna look like this for A and B. Okay, pause the video, do A and B, and then get started. Go. All right. Let's see how you did. Let's start with A. So first off, did you write the formula? A equals B times H. If not, write it down. Next, substitute. A is, now to find the base, we have to count here. I see one, two, three, four, five, six. So the base is six. The height, counting straight up, one, two, three. The height is three. And so we have area is 18 square units. Now the easy way to write that is units with a little two, but we say 18 square units, not 18 units squared. All right, let's check out B. So in B, you have this really weird skinny parallelogram, but we're gonna go through the same steps. First off, area is base times height. Next, we gotta substitute and make sure we get the base and the height. So the base here is four. Now, because it's so skinny, they couldn't go straight up because you would never hit the top, like if they tried to go straight up. So, you'll see what they do to fix that problem is they kind of go out and go straight up over here to show you how high it is from the top to the bottom. So, that means the height is 16. This 17 is just there to throw you off. So, you type in area is 4 times 16 in your calculator. And last, you get area is 64. Did you remember your unit? Since m is meters, it should be 64 square meters. Notice I didn't say meters squared, I said square meters. By the way, a big mistake people are going to make is they are going to forget that little square and they're going to lose a half point on test and quizzes. Okay, so there are the easy ones. We've been doing that on PSSA Powers, but now we get to the fun ones. So, down in example three, here's what you're going to notice. They give you... In this parallelogram, the area. The area is 45 square inches. Now, I know it's the area because, one, it says A. Two, it says square inches. And area is always the square units. Now, they also give you the base. But our height is missing. So in this case, the height would be represented by H. Now, watch how I solve this one by writing the formula, substituting, and solving. So I'm going to start with, let me move my screen over a little bit, with the formula. Area is base times height, just like before. But now watch where I substitute. Because they give me the area, the 45 must go in for the A. And the base is 9, so I know that's going to be 9. And the height is H, we don't know that, so here's what happens when I substitute. 45 equals 9 times h. Now, here's the cool thing. By substituting, this becomes a multiplication equation. 45 equals 9 times h. So to solve it, I'm going to do inverse operations. Divide by 9. We'll get those to cancel. Divide by 9. And that leaves me with h, which is my height, equals 45 divided by 9 is 5 
square or five inches. It's not square inches. The reason it's not square inches is because it's not the area. It's only the height. The dimensions, base and height, aren't square. The area is square. All right, so we're going to go down and take a look at C and D. Now, C, you're going to kind of go through with me. So um, I'll go a little bit slower. D, you're going to do on your own. First off, I know it's missing dimension because they give me the area. It says A and it has squared. They give me the height. It's 6. And I'm missing the base. So what I'm going to do is I like to label the thing that's missing up here with a B. It could be the bottom as well. So first thing you want to write your formula. Area is base times height. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to substitute the 48 and the 6 in this correct spots. Pause the video while you do that and then restart it. We'll see if you're right. Okay, go. All right, let's see how you did. Did you substitute the 48 in for the A because it's area? The base we don't know times the height is 6. Okay, so if you did that, you're still with me. The next step is we have to solve this. Remember, this is a multiplication e equation. To get rid of the times 6, we divide by 6. So divide both sides by 6. And then we solve. B, which is the base, you just have to do 48 divided by 6, which is 8. And the unit is just going to be meters because it's the base. It's not the area. Only area is square units. All right, so now here is your challenge. Your challenge is to do D by itself. You must write the formula. You must substitute 8 in and 96 in in the correct spot. And then you must solve. Now, if you're confused, if you're like, I don't know if that 8 is the base or the height, it doesn't really matter because you can switch the order of the base and height and get the same thing. So don't forget your unit. Let's see if you can get this one completely on your own. Pause, restart when you're done. Go. All right, let's see how you did. First, the formula. Next, substituting. Did you put the 96 in for A? The base we don't know. And the height is 8. Now, if you had 8 as the base and your height missing, it's not that big of a deal. But that pink dotted line is going to be the height. So then I have to solve. Did you divide both sides by 8? If you did, you're still in it. Next, solve. These cancel and leave you with B. And 96 divided by 8 is 12. Did you remember your unit? It's yards, not square yards, because it's not the area. So if you had the formula, you substituted, and you got the answer with the unit, give yourself a big fat C. That means you know how to find a missing dimension when given the area. All right. Last to show you is all that fun stuff in a real world problem. So we have a pretty cool flag there. So let's read the problem. It says Rom Romila is painting a replica of the national flag of Trinidad and Tobago for a research project. Find the area of the black stripe. So we only need the area of the black stripe here. All right. So let's go through. And it says find the area, so that means it can't be missing dimension. So um, I'm going to start with the formula. A equals base times height. Because I notice that this rectangle is a parallelogram. Then I'm going to do some substituting. A equals my base is 6 and 3 fourths. Times my height is 12. Now, to get the area, all you would have to do is type that in. Now, do you remember how to type in mixed numbers on the calculator? You would type in 6 in the fraction button, 3 in the fraction button, and 4. That's how you would type in 6 and 3 fourths. Hit times 12, and if you did that, it would come up to 81 square inches, which you would write like this, unless you want to write it out real long, and that's a pain in the rear end. All right, so that hopefully will tell you how to do today's lesson. You know you have to do some more problems down below. I think you have to do one through five and whatever else is on your absence sheet. So do it, hand it in, ask me for questions, kick some butt. Thanks.